Dear students, welcome to this lecture on digital logic and system design. On the previous turn, we had seen a very useful BCD counter or a decayed counter. And I had said that it could either be an, uh, a ripple counter, which is an asynchronous counter, or it may even be a synchronous counter. Today, we will see how can we design a synchronous counter, uh, a modulo 10 or a BCD or a decayed counter. In synchronous mode because that's a very useful counter we can use it as a decade counter and then we can have as many decades as you want to have so we also saw the end decade counter on the previous turn but before that let us see another useful 4-bit synchronous binary counter now over here you see if the count this is synchronous counter how can we say that this is synchronous because all the clock pulses they are tied up together and for that matter it is a negative edge triggered synchronous binary counter because this bubble shows that triggering will happen at the negative edge when i say the negative edge that means the edge going from one to zero for the clock pulse now suppose this count enable is zero if this is zero what will happen the output of this uh, that means this J and K both are 0, 0. So no change in the count or in the stored uh, data for this flip-flop, JK flip-flop. Now because this is 0, the output over here will also be 0 regardless of what do I have at A1. So when this is 0, J and K for the second flip-flop will also be 0, 0. So no change in the storage of this flip-flop either. Now because this line is 0, this output of the AND gate will also be zero regardless of what A2 has. So again, these JK terminals will be zero, zero, and so no change in the storage of this flip flop. Likewise, you see count enable line. If it is zero, it makes this entire line as zero. You know, this zero continues all through. And if it continues all through, the JK terminals of all the flip flops, they will be zero. And we know that when the JK, they are 0, 0, there is no change. QT plus 1 is QT only, right? So, when this is 0, that means count is disabled. Even at the occurrence of the negative edge of the clock pulses, there will be no change in the stored data for all these flip-flops. So, counting will stop or counting will be halted. Count is disabled, right? So, that is the case when count enable is 0. Now suppose count enable is 1, right? If count enable is 1, then both these terminals will be 1, 1. So it will go into the toggle mode. That means at each negative edge of the clock pulse, the least significant flip-flop will toggle. That is what we have, that is what happens. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. If you write the binary count, then the least significant bit changes at every you know successive step 0 1 0 1 0 1 that that is what precisely will happen when the count is enabled both these terminals are 1 1 so at every negative edge this particular count will uh, this particular flip flop will keep toggling now come to the second flip flop when you come to the second flip flop you see it will toggle or it will go into j and k being 1 1 Everywhere J and K, they are the same. So it is essentially a toggle flip-flop, right? So these J and K will toggle only when count is enabled as well as A1 is 1, right? That is what happens, you know, whenever we have got... So the next flip-flop will toggle at every alternate edge because whenever this a1 is 1 and count enable is 1 only then it will go into toggle mode similarly this will go into toggle mode only when this count enable is 1 and all the previous two are 1 1 right this is 1 1 then only it will make 1 let me see in the next year yeah. this is the binary count sequence see what is happening the least significant count is toggling everywhere, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, right? This toggles only when this is 1, right? 
then it changes only when this is 1 this changes from 1 to 0 from 0 to 1 when this was 1 from 1 to 0 when this one 1 similarly from 0 to 1 when this is 1 and so on over here you see this toggles only when both of them are 1 1 right then it toggles and it toggles the next time again when both of them go 1 1 it toggles next time only when these both of them go 1 1 Talking about A4, it toggles only when all the previous three are one. And it will toggle again. If we take the next, that will be 0, 0, 0, 0. That will toggle only when all three of them are one. Right? So, going by that, you see this will toggle. A1 will toggle at every incoming uh, trailing edge of the clock pulse or the negative edge of the clock pulse. So, it will toggle. But this one will toggle only when the count enable is high as well as A1 is high, right? Then it will go into uh, the toggle mode, J and K both being one. This will go into toggle mode only when this count enable is high as well as A1 is high and A2 is high, right? Then only it will toggle. Similarly, this will go into a toggle mode only when Count enable is high, A1 and A2 and A3, all of them are high, then it will toggle, right? So this becomes a 4-bit synchronous binary counter that way. As I showed you in the count sequence, this is how counting happens. It toggles at every clock pulse, it toggles only when the A1 is 1, only when A1 is 1, only when A1 is 1 and so forth. This will toggle only when both A1 and A2 are 1. It will toggle only when both A1 and A2 are 1, right? It will toggle only when both A1 and A2 are 1. This will toggle only when all A2, A3, A1 are 1. Again, it will toggle the next time only when A, all A1, A2, A3, they are 1, right? So, this is how we will get the 4-bit synchronous binary counter. Based on this, we are going to design another very interesting uh, counter. This is 4-bit up-down binary counter. It will do up counting, it will do down counting also. Right? Now, what is happening? Suppose, first let us see up counting. Right? We are employing T flip-flop. Right? Now, this up counting will only one of these two lines have to be high at a given point of time. That is for sure. Either do up counting or do down counting. So let us take the case of up counting first. Suppose up counting is 1 and down counting is 0. right? So the output of this OR gate will be 1 because up is 1. Down even if it is 0, it doesn't matter. This is an OR gate. So this will be 1. So that means this T flip flop, the least significant T flip flop will toggle at every negative edge of the clock pulse, right? Just as uh, let us let us go back and see. We want up counting in this case. So whether you do up counting or you do down counting, it toggles at every consecutive clock pulse, right? So we are considering up counting first. So, it should toggle at every incoming negative edge of the clock pulse. Now, coming to this one, you see this line, this entire line is 0, right? So, that means this terminal to the OR gate is 0, this is 0, this is 0, because down is 0, right? So, this entire line will be 0. Whereas, this entire line will be 1 if we are doing up counting. This entire line will be 1. Uh, not necessarily, not necessarily. This line will be 1, right? So it will toggle, but over here it will be dependent on A1. It is only when up is high as well as A1 is high that it will go into the toggle mode, right? This is precisely what is happening um, like the previous case, right? Again, this will go into toggle mode only when up is high as well as A1, A2 both are high then only it will go into the toggle mode. If any one of them is 0, then that will make this line 0 and the toggle will toggling will not happen. It will retain state. Again, 
This will go into the toggle mode only when up is high as well as A1, A2 and A3, all three of them are high. Then it will go into the toggle mode. That is what happens, right? It toggles at every clock pulse in the up count. It toggles only when uh, this is high. Toggles only when this is high. A, A1 is high. Toggles only when this is high, right? In the next clock. Whereas A3 toggles only when both A1, A2 are high. It toggles only when both A1, A2 are high. It toggles only when both. So that is how, and likewise for A4, A4 toggles only when all three of them, A3, A2, A1, all three of them are high. Right? So up counting is perfect. Right? Up counting is perfect. Now take the case of down counting. Even if you do down counting, this one has to toggle at every clock pulse. Now we are going this way, right? Down counting will be this way, bottom to up, right? This has to toggle at every incoming clock pulse. So even when you put this up to be zero, but down to be one, this line goes high because this is an OR gate. So this will toggle at every clock pulse. Whereas this one will toggle when down is one and Q is 0 because this is being fed with Q dash. So Q is 0, right? Then it will toggle. Similarly, this will go into the toggle mode only when down is 1 as well as A1, A2, both are 0, 0 because this is, this is the end of A1 dash as well as A2 dash. Now let us go to the count sequence and see if it is happening the way we want it, down counting is like this, right? Down counting is going from bottom to up. So you see, uh, suppose we start with 111, it toggles at every clock pulse. Now it toggles when this is zero, you see? A2 toggles from one to zero when A1 is zero in the next clock pulse. Similarly, it toggles from zero to one when this is zero, it toggles from 1 to 0 when this is 0. It toggles from 0 to 1 when this is 0. So A2 is happening like this. Now let us see in A3. You see it was 1, 1, 1, 1. So it was 1 but it was held as 1 unless both of them become 0, 0. It toggles when both of them are 0, 0. A3 toggles only when both A2, A1 are 0, 0. Then it toggles, right? Similarly, talking about A4, it remains 1, 1, 1, 1 if it was 1, 1 and uh, it will toggle, A4 will toggle only when all A3, A2, A1, all three of them are 0, 0, 0, right? Then it will toggle. Again, after 0, 0, 0, all of them are 0, 0, so it will toggle back again. What will be the next count? It will be 1, 1, 1, 1. We will get back here. This is a modulo 16 counter, so it will get back here. Right, that is what is happening. This particular line is being energized to one when down is uh, one, as well as this is the AND gate, as well as all the previous stages have zeros in them. Right, and since this is being fed with Q dash, that means when all the previous stages. Uh, you know, have zeros in them and correspondingly the, their Q dashes are 1, right? Their Q dashes are 1. A1 dash is 1 and down is 1, then this will go into toggle mode. When A2 dash as well as A1 dash, both of them are 1, 1 and down is 1, then it will go into toggle mode. Otherwise, it will retain state. T is equal to 0 means it will retain state. Similarly, A4 will toggle only when down is 1 as well as a1 dash and a2 dash and a3 dash that is 1 all of them are 1 1 more correspondingly a3 a2 a1 are 0 0 0 and down is 1 then this will go into the toggle mode one more thing regardless of whether we are talking about up counter or down counter you know we see that Although for explanation's sake, I have taken for down counting the initial state as 0, 0, 0 or for up counting as initial state as 1, 1, 1, but that is not required for the functioning of the counter. You start with any arbitrary count in it. Suppose we start with 1, 0, 1, 1, right? 
if it is up counting what will happen in or this this has to toggle anyway but this will look for up counting it will look at a1 and then since a1 is 1 it will switch state it will toggle state and the sequence will continue over here since both of them are 1 1 it will toggle state right but over here it sees that all three of them are not 1 1 so it will not toggle so even if we start with 1 0 1 1 the next count is going to be 1 1 0 0 and the next count will be 1 1 0 1 and the normal counting sequence back and forth from 1 1 1 1 back to 0 0 0 that will continue likewise for down counting you start with any arbitrary uh, starting point suppose we start with 0 1 1 0 right it will look at this 0 and it will toggle right a2 will look at the 0 of a1 and it will toggle whereas a3 will look at the zeros of a1 a2 but it finds that a2 is 1 so it will not toggle similarly a4 will look at a3 a2 a1 and it finds that two of them are not zero even if any one of them has been one it will it won't have toggled so the next count even if you start with 0 1 1 0 will be 0 1 0 1 and the next count will be 0 1 0 0 this is continued to the 0 0 0 0 and then it will come back to 1 1 1 1 and then down count will start all over again so the point i'm trying to make is that the design for the up down counter will work even if the count is anything other than 0 0 0 in the case of up counting and 1 1 1 in the case of down counting it will function properly because just for explanation sake that we had started we had to begin with we had taken 0 0 0 0 as the initial count likewise for the um, four bit synchronous binary counter that we had seen earlier even if you have anything arbitrarily loaded into these flip flops it will function as a counter right for explanation sake only we had started with zero zero any count you take here it will look at what is the status of all the previous flip flops if all of them are one one the that particular flip flop will talk right so that is about synchronous counters we have seen up counter and we have seen up down counter and again both these designs are modular in nature you see the ith state is very similar the ith state comprises of these two and gates and the or gate right so if you want to extend it to five bits you simply have to repeat the ith state and go on repeating as many times as you want to have the number of bits in the up down counter so it is very much a modular design modular design is very useful because you just have to design one stage and you have to keep replicating it as many times as you want to keep it there right so it is not that when the number of bits change you have to design all over again no you just have the ith stage repeated as many times. so the, that is a very modular design okay next we are going to go to synchronous bcd counter we have seen ripple bcd counter earlier in the in the previous lecture we have seen a ripple or the asynchronous bcd counter and i told you that bcd counter decade counter decimal counter it all means the same thing in that case the count sequence is 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 then 1 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 and then back to 0 so it is basically a modulo 10 counter so anything bcd counter modulo 10 counter or uh, you know decade counter decimal counter it all amounts to saying the same thing it is just that we are trying to design the synchronous version for the synchronous version we know that we have to find out the required flip-flop inputs right once we have written this and we need not say uh, present state and next state as we do usually in the case of design of sequential circuits because the count sequence is pretty regular so i can see that for uh, tq1 i see that it changes from 0 to 1 so required flip-flop input if you look at the excitation table of tq 
it is 1. For 1 to 0, it is 1. For 0 to 1, it is 1. So, since this is toggling at every consecutive clock pulse, all the TQs are 1. Whereas over here, 0 to 0, no change. So, TQ2 is 0. 0 to 1, there is a change. So, TQ2 is 1. 1 to 1, there is no change. So, TQ2 is 0. Again, Q2 is uh, 0 to 0, no change. So, the required TQ2 input is 0. And so on, it continues. Whereas for Q4, we see no change, so T24 is 0, no change, so T24 is 0, no change, so T24 is 0. There is a change from 0 to 1 because you've written the count sequence properly, so therefore a 1 here, right? And it continues 0, 0, 0, no change, no, no change, no change, 0, 0. Again, there is a change, 1 to 0, so there is a 1 here. For the last stage, you see from 1, 0, 0, 1, it is going back here, right? which is no change, which is no change. So a zero here, right? So a zero here because there's no change. Coming to Q8, zero to zero, no change, zero. Zero to zero, no change, so zero. No change, no change continues all the way till this point, so TQ8 is one. From zero to one, there is a change. We want the next state to change from the previous state. So that is why, we are feeding TQ8 as 1, right? Again, 1, 1, there is no change. So that is why a 0 here. Now, after this, it goes back here. So there is a change, 1 to 0. So that is why we are feeding a 1 here. So these are the required flip-flop inputs. And how about the output carry? It remains 0 all through. It is only when we have 1, 0, 0, 1 that it goes 1, which indicates that the count has been, uh, you know, uh, completed ones. You can use this output carry to feed the next stage of the end decade counter. If you are employing this synchronous BCD counter as the ith stage of an end decade counter, then this Y can be used for energizing the next decade counter in the series. Right? So this is the explanation about the synchronous BCD counter. Now you can write the equations corresponding to this. TQ1 is 1. It is 1 all through, so we know. For TQ2, you draw a K map. Do it yourself. Draw a K map in terms of Q8, Q4, Q2, Q1. That will be a four variable K map and see whether the minimize uh, expression is this or not. Similarly, for TQ4, draw a K map, right? Draw a K map and see. Uh, also, when you draw the K-map, assume that all the remaining stages are don't care. Take that don't care condition 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 into account and then see whether TQ4, the expression to it is coming out to be Q2, Q1 or not. Likewise for TQ8, okay, this will be the expression obtained from the four variable K-map where all the remaining states are taken to be, uh, you know, don't care. And why is Q8, Q1 that also you can see after putting, uh, you know, all the um, don't care conditions. So you have to verify yourself these expressions from the four variable K-map. Do not forget to put these don't care conditions there. This is a BCD counter. So 10 to 15, they're all don't care conditions. And then you also have to realize this in the form of a logical circuit. Draw a logical circuit corresponding to a synchronous BCD counter using these equations. These are your design equations for five design equations. So you can realize these design equations with the help of a logic diagram. That is what you can do, right? So regardless of whether you've got a synchronous BCD counter or an asynchronous BCD counter, you can employ it as the ith stage of an n decade counter, which is a pretty handy, handy counter. Two decade counters put together will make your count go from 0 to 99. Three decade counters will make your count go from 0 to 999. Four counters will make it from 0 to 9999. Nine, nine, uh, yeah, 99,000, uh, uh, sorry, 9999 and so forth, right? So you go on putting those decade counters, whether synchronous or asynchronous, and you get an indicate. Now, next. We are going to see a very useful circuit. This is a binary counter with parallel load. First of all, let us understand what is its utility. 
it will count in the normal sequence but suppose you want to preload a count in it before the counting starts suppose i don't want to count from 000 but i want this to count from the count uh, value that i feed to it i want this to count from 5 i want this to count from 11 i want this to count from 8 whatever so i should have a parallel load facility also when i do parallel load regardless of the previous count that parallel load should be fed to these flip-flops and when i withdraw parallel load then it should go into a normal counting sequence so this is a combined circuit in that sense let us understand how it works first of all the clear terminal that we know it's asynchronous clear terminal right so regardless of whether clock pulse is there load is there count is there it will clear all flip-flops to zero zero so in that sense this is like parallel load with zero 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 okay a special case that is called resetting the sequential circuit so if you want to reset the sequential circuit then you give this clear terminal as zero you see all of them are don't uh, sorry a negative edge triggered you know this is this is uh, uh, you know uh, bubble is there so that is why whenever clear is zero this will get reset asynchronously regardless of the remaining three um, control functions right it gets cleared to zero now when clear is one that means you don't want to clear it and in that case clock pulse is there or not but load and count this is don't care but load and count are zero zero when you say that load and count are zero zero that means a zero occurs here and a zero occurs here right both these lines are zero zero so what will happen this line is being fed here and this line is being fed here the output of both these or gates will be zero zero when the output to both these or gates are zero zero there will be no change likewise this line is zero so this line is zero right and this line is zero so this line is zero right and this line is zero also because load is zero so the the inputs to both these jk terminals is zero zero again so no change in this here either coming to this one likewise you can see this line is zero so this line is zero and by virtue of this line being zero right this goes zero and this is zero anyway so the output to both these or uh, uh, the output of both these or gates are zero again so no change here either similarly these two will also be zero zero you can see for yourself this load is zero two consecutive uh, inverters leave it zero and count is zero also right right so this uh, line will be zero and the other line is also coming out to be zero because of this so these two are zero zero so no change so you have seen the first condition the second condition is clear is high clock pulse may be anything load count both of them are zero zero there will be no change no counting will happen and no loading will happen either so no change now clear is high right clock pulse the positive edge comes why positive edge because you see i am inverting this clock pulse and it is a negative edge triggered flip flop right so two negatives you see makes it a positive edge triggered that is why i am showing the positive edge this is a way to show the positive edge right i could have shown one but one means it requires a sustained one no only the positive edge that means the edge which takes it from zero to one so this is the way to represent it so when clear is high and positive edge comes the load is high count may be anything count may be either 0 or 1 let us see when load is high when load is high this particular line is high right this line okay this line is going to feed i1 at j and i1 dash at k so it essentially becomes a d flip flop so whatever you give at i1 that will be stored here so i1 is parallelly loaded into this flip flop coming to this case load is high right load is high that means it is passing i2 over here right and i2 bar is coming to this line okay 
so if that happens then this gets fed with whatever is i2 it behaves in the d mode that is d, uh, d flip flop mode and whatever is i2 that will be stored similarly for i3 when this line is high i get i3 at this point and i get i3 bar at this point right again this also behaves as a d flip flop so whatever is i3 that will get loaded in i4 load is high so this i4 will be routed all the way to j and i4 dash will be routed all the way to k so again this is like j this is like i4 and this is like i4 dash so it behaves as the d flip flop if i4 is 0 it will reset 0 1 it will reset if i4 is 1 1 0 it will get set so 1 will get stored so load input happens when i have this condition clear is high positive edge of the clock comes load is high count uh, terminal could be anything because that becomes don't care now for counting next binary state i need to have one at the clear terminal positive edge of the clock load should go zero and count should go one when load goes zero i have this line as zero entire this line is zero so correspondingly this will uh, go zero when this goes zero that means the or gate is enabled just as the and gate gets enabled when you have got one of its input as one it gets into enable mode similarly or gate a 2 bit or gate becomes enabled when one of its terminal is zero so for all of them for all of them one of the inputs goes zero now since uh, you know this is the least significant bit it has to toggle right so so giving both these terminals as one one it goes into the toggle mode so it toggles at every stage whereas this one this one you see it depends on a1 it depends on a1 when a1 is high then only it goes into the toggle mode right so it will toggle only when a1 is high then it will switch state just as we have seen in the previous uh, you know counters up down counter or just the up counter now over here it is dependent on both a1 and a2 when both of them are high high 1 1 it will go into the toggle mode and this will change similarly a4 will toggle only when all three of them a1 a2 a3 all three of them you see all three of them are being fed here. they are high then only it will go into the toggle mode right and the carry out is essentially a1 and a2 and a3 and a4 right you see and count is high right so this is how it happens this is how it operates binary counter with parallel load binary counter with parallel load how do i take care of this load being zero i take care through this right load zero means this is one so this will be one only when count is high and load is zero when count is high and load is zero then only this counting will happen so essentially clear being zero all of them being don't care the circuit clears to zero all flip flops are reset to zero and clear is high clock pulse may or may not be there but load and count are zero zero no change when clear is high the positive edge comes load is high count could be anything zero or one it loads the parallel inputs into the flip flops whatever you supply here and when this clear is high clock pulse is positive edge load has necessarily to be zero and count has necessarily to be one it will count the next binary state whatever be the previous state it will go one count up so that is where we will stop and we will continue from here on the next thank you very much